move very quickly and you can kind of piece this together or you can listen to maybe the podcast from the first service and get the expanded version. Um, <clears throat> this last week, Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. How many of you know what that means? If you don't, don't feel bad. How many of you know what that means? Put your hand up. Okay. All of you probably came from another church experience background. Probably. Um, how many of you know what Lent is? Put your hand up. Oh, more of you know what Lent is. Good. Uh, no, it's not the thing in the dryer. <laughs> That's Lent. This Lent, okay? Um, listen, this last week, I had several people ask me about Ash Wednesday and Lent because um, they noticed that we didn't really mention it or, you know, kind of put it out there as a big announcement um, like that. And, and <clears throat> They just wondered, you know, why is that? Well, understand, I, I appreciate that question because I grew up as a Lutheran boy. And I experienced, you know, what Ash Wednesday was and what Lent was. And because I had several people ask, and, and in light of, you know, the Lord reminding me, you know, there are so many newer people to this local church, this fellowship, that, you know, this might be a really good thing that he used people to kind of, by the Holy Spirit to say, hey, Randy, maybe you should just talk about this from me. And so that's what I want to do. I want to take a moment here because um, Ash Wednesday was last Wednesday. And it's the start, in this part of the world, it's the start of Lent, which goes about 40 days, and people are supposed to prepare themselves coming up to Easter. Now we're going to talk about what that preparation means. In... Um, uh, the eastern part of the world, um, they also, in mainline denominations especially, they um, also do um, Lent. But their Lent starts on a Monday, and theirs goes 40 days and usually ends about nine days approximately before Easter. Okay? Now, Lent and Ash Wednesday kind of go back to about 600 um, A.D., okay? Um, and... That's kind of when this was instituted, and uh, initially it kind of started with the Catholic Church and others kind of went along with it and other denominations. And so Ash Wednesday and Lent, for example, um, are, are something that's really acknowledged um, and um, kind of practiced in a lot of what we would consider to be mainline churches. So Catholic churches, Lutheran churches, what I, wa what I was a part of as a kid, um, Methodist churches, uh, some Presbyterian churches, um, you know, some Baptist churches, um, depending on where and all of that. Um, and so in some of those mainline churches, not limited just to that group, I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what might be considered as a mainline church. Um, they to practice it to, from one degree to another. And I want to talk to you briefly about how, what's happened and kind of how it evolved through history and why in uh, many, not all, but many evangelical-type churches, Ash Wednesday isn't really barely mentioned much or Lent. Um, and so um, I just want you to understand, um, you know, here at New Life, Assembly of God, um, you don't really hear it mentioned much. And, and I want you to know that um, it's not that our, our somewhat, uh, maybe from your perspective, that we're silent about it um, doesn't mean that we think um, celebrating or participating in Ash Wednesday or Lent that we're against it. That's just not the case. But I want us to look at what it means, kind of what it means in a kind of a nutshell version um, so you, we can get an idea and then um, in our fellowship, why maybe we don't see it acknowledged as much as maybe other denominations do. And please understand, as I go through this, this is not saying, hey, our way's better, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Um, and it's not that uh, as celebrating and participating in Ash Wednesday and Lent is a bad thing. It is not. What we're going to find out is it comes down to what happens for us personally. You see, whether you're in this fellowship or another fellowship or denomination, anytime anything becomes formal, 
and tradition to us and we disconnect our heart in it, it becomes a form. And now we go through the motion, but our heart is far from what that spiritual emphasis is supposed to be. You can't really find in the scripture Ash Wednesday and Lent. But understand, there are other things that we participate in that um, we feel that we should be a part of and that we do. And so it's not like, hey, here comes this man-made thing, it's all bad. We have seasons. We, we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Easter, uh, Good Friday, okay? Um, we, uh, we certainly look at the day of Pentecost. And I don't want any of those events, times, seasons to ever become a formality to us because we honor them at least annually every year. I can't find Mother's Day in here. (laughs) But don't think for one moment that we're not going to honor Mother's Day Sunday in this church. (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) I want to live a little longer. Okay. Plus, now my mother, they relocated and live in this, you know, and they come to this church. I better honor Mother's Day. I always did anyhow. You know, for my wife's sake, she's not my mother, but, you know, I'm still going to honor her that day. It's not just her, her children's job. It's my job. She's not my mother. She does do some things that my mother did for me. Thank you, Sue. Okay. Um, But she's not my mother. So I want you to understand, there are some traditions and things that we add to our life that doesn't mean that it's not biblical or there's not a benefit to it. Hey, this last January, just a few days into January, we kicked off the year with 40 days of fasting and prayer for our church. can't find in here where it says, you know, you have to do that. We felt like it was the right thing to do. We know that fasting and prayer should be part of a believer's spiritual disciplines and their spiritual life on a regular basis, all the time. In fact, you've heard me mention that those 40 days of fasting and prayer are over, but um, prayer is not over. We're going to still give ourselves to prayer, hopefully more now than we did even before the 40 days because we've been changed through it. We're seeking the Lord more. We're studying more, praying more. And fasting, though the fasting part was done at 40 days, I want you to know that here at New Life, starting this week, we're going to highlight Wednesday. Every week is our church day for fasting. Now, if that day doesn't work for you, you can change it to another day. You don't have to call and tell me. You don't have to text me to let me know. It's between you and the Lord. We just want to do it as an emphasis. Does it tell me in here that every Wednesday we have... No, it doesn't. But it's what we're going to do. We just feel an emphasis that, you know, fasting needs to be a part of our spiritual disciplines in prayer life and walk with the Lord. And so it's between you and God. If you give up breakfast or lunch or supper or all day or you don't eat till the sun goes down, just remember in summer it doesn't go down till about 9.45 here in the end of June. <laughs> So the way to make it through is you sleep later. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Just helping you out. No, I'm kidding. So so understand, there are some emphasis and seasons and things that we do, and it's right, as long as our heart of faith is engaged in it, and that we don't do something just out of a form. See, when Ash Wednesday and Lent initially started, it was kind of a personal, if you look back in history, when it started, it was kind of a, a thing for people to do personally. Through time and more denominations doing Ash Wednesday and Lent, it became something that was more public. And um, letting people know that this is what we do or this is how I'm identified. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. You can wear the Christian t-shirt, you can, you know, whatever it is, that you bumper stick, whatever it is, and, you know, make this proclamation about you being a believer. That's it's entirely up to you. Uh, it's the same as, 
you know, Ash Wednesday, they would take ashes and make it ashes on their forehead in the shape of a cross to signify a couple of things. But one, that they were, part, they were doing Lent, and so Lent was part of a um, abstinence and a repentance and more prayer. That's what, that's what initially um, Ash Wednesday and Lent was about. It was about fasting and prayer. As time evolved, you know how this works sometimes in humanity, in our life, in a personal life, or as an organization, or an institution, or whatever, when we start to do these things, and they become tradition, and slowly we disengage the purpose in our personal faith expression, and we just go through the motion, it becomes a form. And I am not suggesting to you in any way, shape, or form that those who um, are, still celebrate Ash Wednesday and Lent are just doing it for the formality. If their heart's engaged and it's a personal faith thing and not just a religious thing to do, listen, for those who their heart and their faith is engaged in it, in their walk with the Lord, it's a marvelous thing. It's just like anything around here that we do. If our heart isn't in it and affected by the walk with the Lord, I don't care what fellowship or denomination you're a part of, it's a form of godliness, like Paul writes and says, they deny its power. When we just start doing things out of tradition and we remove the personal faith aspect that keeps us connected to the purpose, we've lost it. And they've, they've observed some things over time. You know, um, one of the things that they did with the ashes and why they used ashes, just a side note, um, that they used ashes, was ashes kind of reminded people of their own mortality. We're made from the dust of the earth. And it reminds us that we're human and we're mortal and we have a need of God who brings eternal life. Second thing for ashes that they represented is that they were going through a time of humbling themselves and recognizing sin and they had sorrow for their sin. You'll see this in the Old Testament. You'll see sackcloth and ashes and fasting and those things went together. When Jesus came and into the New Testament, we're going to look at some scriptures here that talk about a little bit about this, and I'm going to connect this of why you may not hear Ash Wednesday and Lent as much in evangelical circles as you do in some mainline churches. I'm just telling you why. It's, once again, <laughs> if our, if we could be here in a Pentecostal church, but if our heart of, in faith and personal connection to the Lord isn't engaged, all you're doing is coming to church. Amen. It's pretty empty. And so, why we don't often see in evangelical circles Ash Wednesday and Lent being kind of to the forefront of an emphasis is that some of what Ash Wednesday or Lent that emphasis is something, when we look at the scripture, that you and I are called to every day of our life. And it's not wrong to have Ash Wednesday and Lent and emphasize those things, but they've watched something happen as Lent and Ash Wednesday have evolved through centuries, generations. Is that for some, it has become a form. In other words, they live how they want, they still go to church, and this is not everybody, but they've watched this happen from when it was first birthed to what's happened, and this can happen in any area of our, our life, too, is they've watched where now Lent no longer had the emphasis of prayer or fasting. It had to do, it moved all the way from prayer and fasting to, I need to give up cravings. And I do it Monday through Saturday, and Sunday I get off. I can indulge in my craving. And then it starts again on Monday. If you go to the eastern part of the world, they give you Saturday and Sunday to reprieve to a, a relaxed abstinence. And so it depends on what denomination, it depends on what part of the world you're in and culture you're a part of, of how they practice this. You and I, in our fellowship, we're to practice Ash Wednesday and um, Lent every day in this context. Let's look at what Jesus says. In Matthew, 
chapter 6, verse, uh, well, I'll start with verse 16. And Jesus is speaking, he says, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may be... Uh, may not be seen by others, but by your Father who sees you in secret doing this. And your Father who sees in secret what you're doing will reward you. So the point that Jesus is making here is this. You don't have to show everybody how spiritual you are and that you're giving up stuff and that you're fasting or that you're spending more time in prayer. I mean, if somebody finds out because they're close to you or whatever, you know, that's, that's fine. You're not like you're losing your reward, you see. But well, Jesus talks about doing these things in private. Kind of how Ash Wednesday and Lent started. It was kind of promoted to the church, but it was personal for people to participate and do. And then it turned into some of these other things. You know, there's nothing wrong if, if it's engaging to them and they wear ashes on their forehead and many places don't do that part anymore, whether they're in a main line or not, some still do. You know, if you see this on your forehead, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, they're going through a time of repenting and giving up some things and, and doing that. And there's nothing wrong with that. We wear the Christian t-shirts, we wear a cross on a chain, I get it. But what Jesus is saying is, you don't have to broadcast to everybody what you're doing, trying to portray spiritually, is you deal with that personally in your life and let the fruits of what's going on in your personal life with Christ, because your heart's engaged, your faith is engaged, and we're not witnessing a miracle because it's already 12.01 and I didn't finish in 15 minutes, <laughs> is, um, there's another miracle, I'll be done before one, <laughs> way before one o'clock. Okay, so is what happens personally in our life, engaged with Christ in our personal walk, that what should come out and people should notice is the transformation of who we are and that the character of Christ begins to speak loudly and louder than wearing a t-shirt or ashes or just a cross on a chain. That's what they're supposed to notice is the life that's changed because personally and privately we repent we die daily. We're walking with Christ. We are seeking him. We are becoming more like him. We are dying to ourselves, And we come out and live our life, and then people see that. See, what they've watched happen to um, Ash Wednesday and Lent is this. People, though they go to church, they can live how they want. At church, they're nice. They throw some money in the basket or whatever it is, and they do some you know, Christian-looking things. But when you deal with them outside of that in their personal life or in business or, or whatever else, it's like, wait a minute. There is such an inconsistency between who they are at church or during these traditions and who they are the rest of the year. And so some of them will do the religious thing because the church calls them to do, you know, Ash Wednesday, Lent, 40-day fast, whatever our emphasis is in any fellowship or denomination, but we're talking specifically about Ash Wednesday and Lent, is that then during those days, they give up some cravings. But when the 40 days are over, they go back to living like they were before the 40 days. For some who have no church experience in history, they, they find it a little bit medieval in the context that if the church mandates something, then we're all going to do it. That's how they look at it. Is they say, I watch your life. I see how you act. It seems inconsistent to the Christianity that you proclaim. I watch you go through Lent, and I watch you give up some cravings, and you talk a little bit about it, and I get a little insight. And then when it's over, I watch you go back to living the way you were before the 40 days. See, you and I, after the recent 40 days of fasting and prayer, we should be a different person after the 40 days. We're to be transformed more. We're to be changed more. We're to become like Christ more. And it's not just based on the 40 days fasting, or it's not just based on Lent. This is the call to you and I as a believer every day. Listen to these scriptures. Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31 uh, through 33. Um, I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die every day. 
What do I gain if, if humanly speaking, I fought with the beasts of Ephesus? If they did not, uh, sorry, if the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor as is right and do not go on sinning for some have no knowledge of God and this is a shame to you. In other words, you profess Christ but there's no power. You go through the religious traditions but there's no raising of the dead. There's no power of the gospel and therefore those who have new knowledge of God, you're supposed to be a light there and they're not getting it because you're not shining and you just go on sinning. That's like you and I just live in our life, go to church, act nice, but live according to our flesh, do uh, Ash Wednesday, Lent, or whatever the emphasis is in whatever church you go to, and then afterwards we just go back to living like we were. What good is that? What good is it to, you know, come to church and then leave and go live this week the same that you've been living for maybe years? What was the point? See, you and I have to understand the, the call of Christ and what he calls us to. Look at this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. He says, And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Look what he says in, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, 24. And Jesus says this, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, when? Say it, those of you who are reading it. Daily. When? Daily. Not just some part of the year, not just on Sundays, not just on some emphasis, but daily. We're to die to ourselves daily. We're to repent daily. We're to be transformed daily. My life transformed, my walk with Christ, your walk with Christ in private, doing in secret, nobody else's business, not trying to show off how spiritual we are. If you do that, you've already gained your reward. Jesus said, we die daily in our private life, in our preferences, and as we live that out in public, that's what they're supposed to see. And they will not look at this as if it's medieval. They're going to look and say, wait a minute, I've dealt with this person. When they proclaim Christ or do some emphasis at the church or whatever it is, their life backs it up. This isn't just some 40-day thing. This isn't just losing some craving. This isn't just a little time of repentance and then going back and living the same way we've been living. No, we're continually being renewed. We're continually being transformed because daily we feel the call to follow Christ and to make things right between us. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Forever, for whoever would try to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose or forfeit? his own soul. Why don't you stand with me, please? You and I, as followers of Christ, remove denomination, remove fellowship. You and I are called that every day is Ash Wednesday. Every day is Lent. Dying to ourself, denying ourselves, giving something up of our flesh. It's not just food. It's not just cravings. It's what our flesh wants that we crucify. We die to ourself and live unto Christ. That's a call every day for you and I. Every day. That when you fast, it's in private. Some people close to you might notice or see or whatever, and hey, you didn't lose your reward. It's not like you're putting it on a billboard. I'm fasting today. 
I'm not going to put on a billboard here on the interstate by us. New life, fast, every Wednesday. And we're praying for you. I'm not going to do that. You can pick any day you want. I just want it to be part of the fabric of our Christian walk and a spiritual discipline like love and peace and patience, right? Kindness, prayer, faithfulness, fasting, study of God's word, kindness, goodness, self-control. I, I just want it to be part of the fabric. I believe that's what we're called to. So I want to encourage you. Let this become part of your life. Let every Wednesday be Ash Wednesday to us, so to speak. Seek the Lord. And so in evangelical circles, in our fellowship, it's maybe why you don't hear much about Ash Wednesday or Lent. There's nothing wrong with it. But we kind of look at it like this isn't just some seasonal religious thing we do. This is about my personal, private, in secret life with Jesus. And out of that, I don't need the ashes on my forehead for people to know. But by experiencing life with me, hopefully they get to taste Christ. That's what I want them to see. And there's nothing wrong if I have ashes on the forehead or not. But I just got to make sure that this is happening in my world. Whether I encounter Ash Wednesday or Lent or don't really highlight it. I don't want to be the same person before the 40 days as after. I want to be changed and pick up my cross every day, every day. So I'm gonna pray that you and I become and continue to become the living church of Jesus Christ here on earth, that what's done in secret will bring forth fruit in our life and we will not just do things out of a form and then deny its power after we've done it. See, the difference of something becomes a form or not has everything to do with the attitude of the heart. For some, they can do ashes and they can do Lent and their heart's so engaged, their personal faith is so engaged because they're trying to pursue God and when Lent is over, they don't go back to the way they were living. They've been changed some. For them, that, for that person, it's not a form. For the people who just go through it, or like here, if we just kind of come to church and leave and no change, no conviction, no growth, no transformation, no building, then church is just a form. I don't care what building or what faith or what fellowship or denomination you're in. You see, I want you and I, whether it's something new, whether it's annual, whether it's an emphasis, whether it's a tradition, that our hearts would always be engaged with the Lord in it. Because in our secret life, we're working this out with Jesus and letting the fruit come out. Letting the fruit come out that people see. Not an empty, empty tradition or annual event. Let's pray together.